uh, <coughs> before I start, um, uh, so it's the first time I'm here as a, a, a EM, uh, uh, EMBO installation grant awardee. And what I'm going to tell you today is a bit very quickly what I've done as an independent group leader in Paris, where I had my lab for six, seven years, and what I plan to do now that I'm moving to the IMM in Lisbon. So <coughs> in, um, if you go online and you search for the word cell, this is the type of image that you see. You have this very round, very nice bowl with things inside, which are called organelles, but you know as well as I know that this is just representations and these organelles are not really floating around. And one thing I'm interested in in my laboratory is how these organelles are distributed throughout the cell and what is the function of this distribution and how they are connected with each other and usually they are connected through the cytoskeleton. And the main organelle that we are interested in in my laboratory is also the main organelle in the cell, which is the nucleus. And what you see here is a very beautiful EM picture that I saw once at a, a, um, <coughs> a conference, but this is not published. I got it then afterwards over the internet. And you see the surface of the nucleus with all the nuclear pores, and you see colored coded these different filaments, which are the different types of cytoskeleton that are connected to the nucleus. And it's amazing how we, we, own, we don't know almost anything about these beautiful connections. And most of these connections are mediated by a class of proteins called the cache proteins. And, uh, and we don't know if there's other type of connections happening, okay? So why are, am I interested in looking at these connections with the nucleus? So it turns out that connecting the, nu the nucleus to the cytoskeleton is important for multiple functions in the cell. And this is, and is this important? Yes, because if you mutate or if there's problems in these connections, this gives rise to a lot of different defects and is associated with a lot of different pathologies. So we think that it's really important to understand how all this wiring occurs in the cells so we can understand better cellular and organism and physiological functions. And <coughs> so, what I'm going to show you today is the work we're doing in the lab, looking at nuclear positioning as a readout for these connections, because if we interfere with these connections, we interfere with nuclear positioning in cells, and in particular tell you about the function of nuclear positioning in muscle, in skeletal muscle. And why skeletal muscle? So skeletal muscle is a multinucleated cell, the muscle fibers, and the nuclei are usually positioned at the periphery. Uh, and <coughs> But m muscle fibers are formed by fusion of mononucleated cells called the myotubes. And during this process, as you can see in this slide, you go to form a myotube where the nuclei are in the middle, as you can see in the middle of the slide, and then they move to the periphery. And is this important for the function of the cell? We don't really know. But we know that there's a lot of different diseases where the nuclei are not at the periphery and they are in the middle, suggesting that this is important. <laughs> and so the work I've done, w what I'm doing in my lab to study how this process is occurring is, is we just watch these myotubes being formed. As you can see in this movie, these are just mononucleated cells with labeled nuclei that they start aligning and you start seeing all these lines and curves. And then you start seeing the formation of these myotubes right in the middle of the screen. And then you can see on the top, you have all these fusion events occurring and the nuclei of this mononucleated cell just moves straight forward to the center and all the nuclei are aligned in the middle of the myotube. Okay. So to study this process, we wanted to know what motor proteins could be involved. So we performed an siRNA screen for all the microtubal motor proteins and we found a kinesin that when we knock down, uh, we have all this aggregation of the nuclei that you can see in the bottom. This same phenotype was observed by uh, our collaborator Mary Bailey's in Drosophila, but using a different protein, which is called MAP7, which is also a microtubule binding protein. And together, we found a new mechanism to position the nucleus in the muscle cells. And interestingly enough, this process is completely independent of the cache proteins I was telling you about. So it's a completely a novel area that we don't really know what is going on. And furthermore, for the first time, we show that the position of the nucleus in the muscle is absolutely important for muscle function. So if you screw up nuclear positioning, the flies have problems uh, walking, in this case, the larvae, okay? 
So, and in fact, it's based on these two premises that's part of the work that I want to do. It's basically, we want to use this system to discover new cache independent mechanism of nuclear positioning and also to determine the function of, of, uh, of nuclear positioning muscle fiber. So for the cache independent nuclear positioning, we are just using the system that I was telling you about, and we're gonna perform an sRNA screen for nuclear envelope proteins, and then for what it comes out, we're gonna try to identify the mechanisms, and how the nucleus is connected to the cytoskeleton, and so on. And for, <coughs> for the function of nuclear positioning, we are revisiting uh, a whole idea that in the muscle, each nuclei, the products of that nuclei, the mRNA and the proteins, are confined in an area near to that nucleus, forming what is called a nuclear domain. And in a normal situation, you have everything spread out throughout the muscle, as you can see here, but if you can imagine, it's if, you, if you disrupt nuclear positioning, now there's gonna be areas in the muscle that maybe they are not under the influence of certain proteins or lacking certain mRNAs. So, what we're gonna do is we develop the system in the lab where we can form highly differentiated myofibers in culture that we can image over 10 days. That you can see here, the nuclei just start spreading out very slowly, they start pausing, the fibers get thicker, the nuclei start going to the periphery, and what you don't see here is you form all the sarcomeres, all the triads, all the contractile elements, everything is here. And by using this system, we expect to, to to be able to observe these nuclear domains being formed and see how they can be changed and how, wh what is going on in terms of distribution of certain proteins and certain mRNAs. And we expect to understand so why nuclear positioning is important for muscle function. And so I'll just end by thanking the people in my lab they are still in Paris and the new people that are, that are now being recruited to Portugal and all the funding agencies, and especially for your attention. Thank you.